welcome, welcome to the rigid body equations of motion. Today we are going to discuss the precession of the equinoxes and of satellite orbits. We are going to model the Earth as a top with a figure axis precessing about the normal to the ecliptic, that is the normal to, to the plane containing the orbit of the Earth around the Sun. And it is this precession motion that is referred to as the precession of the equinoxes. For a completely spherical planet, no torque could be applied to it from the solar system. However, Earth is approximately an oblate spheroid of revolution. The net torque on the equatorial bulge due to the gravitational attraction of the Sun and Moon causes Earth's figure axis to precess in space. We will consider a distribution of mass points forming the Earth while the source of the gravitational torque is a single point of mass capital M. Then the gravitational potential energy of the Earth will be a, a, the sum of the interaction terms between the Sun and all of the particles which we are assumed to, to, to constitute the, the, the rigid top, which, which is the Earth. So the, the summation is implicit here and the each radius of index i, so the the distance between the, the particle i and the sun, this is just going to be the magnitude of a vector of the form r minus r i prime, where r is just the the radius vector of the sun drawn from the center of, of uh, the center of uh, mass of the earth. And our i prime is going to be the, the the radius vector of particle i as drawn from the from the center of mass. And then, so if we if we if we write this uh, magnitude explicitly in terms of these two vectors, and we force uh, the the center of mass sun radius, uh, we force it out. Then, in in this sum, we are left with this. Uh, uh, with this structure, which is uh, which is simply the the generating function of the Legendre polynomials for the case when r is much greater than r i prime, which is abund abundantly satisfied uh, in the present case, and the 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 arguments the arguments themselves of the of the polynomials are just the the cosines uh, of the of the angle between. Uh, the the um, center of mass and sun radius and the uh, radius between the center of mass and the particle i. And writing this generator generator generating function out explicitly, um, it expands as the 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 sum over going from n equals zero to infinity from the uh, from from these terms, and the the Legendre polynomials that will be uh, of interest for the present calculation are the are the ones listed here, for a general argument x. Now, in the in the case of a spherical body with a radial mass distribution, all terms aside of the zero order vanish in this expansion. And to see this, uh, we we convert the sum to uh, an integral over over a sphere, so this is just the spherical volume element of the radially dependent density, and uh, also these uh, these terms of the sum. And th this is very straightforward to see. So the the integral over the angle phi is just the factor of two pi. The um, the, the radial integral factors out separately. And the integral over psi. Once we change the uh, the integration variable to to the argument of the Legendre polynomials, turns out to be the expression here, which is just the uh, orthonormality relation for the Legendre polynomials. So this integral reduces to the Kronecker delta of n and zero, and this proves the the statement above. In the case of slight deviations from a spherical shape, uh, we expect terms beyond n equals zero to be non-vanishing, but to also decrease rapidly with increasing n. 
And now if you consider the center of mass to be located at the origin and we look at the n equals 1 term, so at the dipole term, then the written out explicitly the term is of this form and we can write the the product between the, the these these radii and the cosine here just as the as the dot product between the center of mass and sun radius uh, and the uh, relative uh, distance of the of particle i to the center of mass and since the center of mass is located at the origin then by the definition of the center of mass the, the sum which is implicit here is zero so the dipole term vanishes and this leaves us with the, the quadrupole term, so or the term having n equal two, which um, has the expression here. So the, the total potential is going to be the sum of the sum of the monopole term plus uh, the, the the quadrupole term. And in order to to reduce this to to a simpler form, we first of all look at the moment of inertia scalar for uh, rotations about the the direction of the sun as seen from the center of mass so this this is the definition of the uh, moment of inertia scalar for this for this particular axis of rotation uh, we we know what this this dot product is so we can write it in terms of the the cosine of psi and then for for an elementary mani manipulation you see immediately that this that this um, uh, relation holds, and uh, and and consequently, the um, the total potential acquires the acquires the form here. Furthermore, if we look at the at the components of the inertia tensor, at at, uh, at I mean, if we look at their general definition. Then we see that if we if we calculate the, the trace of the inertia tensor, so if we calculate the, the sum of its diagonal elements, the by performing the sum over this expression, we uh, immediately get the, the result here. So what we're saying is that we can express uh, this quantity in the potential in terms of the, the trace of the inertia tensor, and as such, the, the the final result is the is the one given here where uh, tiny m is Earth's mass, the scalar i of index r is the moment of inertia about the um, relative position of the, uh, of the sun as seen from the, from the center of mass, and the, the tensor i is the moment of inertia tensor in the principal axis system. So in this, uh, if we work in this diagonal representation, then the, the the trace of the inertia tensor is going to be the, the sum of the principal moments of inertia, which means that the the potential energy uh, uh, is written in the form here, and this is known as uh, McCulloch's formula. Consider now that the the body is um, symmetrical about uh, about the figure axis. And then that alpha, beta, and gamma represent the direction cosines of the radius vector between the center of mass and the sun uh, relative to the principal axes. Then right away we can write the uh, moment of inertia for rotation about uh, this axis in, in the form here. And using the fact that the, the sum of squares of these direction cosines is, is equal with 1, we can recast things in this form and bringing this in in McCulloch's formula we obtain this uh, this representation of the of the potential in terms of the, the monopole and, and quadrupole term and uh, th this particular form involving the the, the gender polynomial of second order uh, could have been foretold from the requirement of the potential of uh, a mass distribution to obey Poisson's equation. The solution appropriate to the symmetry of the body is an expansion in terms of the form given here. So, the Jandre polynomial is for the rand divided by uh, the the radial distance 
at, uh, at a power incremented by one unit with respect to the order of the polynomial, and uh, the result here retains the first two non-vanishing non terms. Uh, in effect, what we have obtained is the gravitational analog of the multiple expansion of the electrostatic potential of an arbitrary charged body. The, the dipole term is absent due to the mass always being positive, such that uh, uh, the, the, the gravitational dipole moment vanishes. Uh, furthermore, the, the inertia tensor uh, is in this case analogous to the quadruple moment tensor and as thus through, through analogy with electrodynamics we can say that the, the mechanical effects we are seeking arise from the gravitational quadruple moment of the oblate earth. Uh, furthermore, uh, the, the analysis up to this point has focused on a fixed, uh, on, on a specific configuration of the system and no, no rigidity constraint has been explicitly imposed in order to to derive this result. So, so this at a given instant in time this would be true even for a, a non-rigid body. Looking specifically at the, at the quadrupole term now the, the direction cosine gamma in Earth's case is given by the, the direction cosine between the figure axis and the radius vector from the planet center to the sun or, or moon. And the, the idea is that this direction cosine changes during the orbital motion. But if, uh, let's say, the orbital motion is in the xy plane and the figure axis in, is in the xz plane, uh, you, you can see immediately that in, in that situation the uh, the direction cosine here is given by this product between the f theta being just the inclination of the figure axis with respect to the z-axis and uh, eta in this case is just the the angle swept by the uh, by the sun let's say relative to the to the to the x-axis in the xy plane so then the, the the quadruple term of the potential can be written as seen here and we need to we need to note now that orbital motion is very rapid compared to precession. So to obtain the mean precession rate, it is adequate to average the quadruple term in the potential over a complete orbital period of celestial of the celestial body considered. We will approximate the uh, the variations in radius in radial distance amounting to zero due to to low eccentricities. So then the only variation we need to consider is that in the cosine of um, a eta. And this can be evaluated in a very straightforward way, thus leading to the, the average form of the quadruple term of the potential over, over an orbital period being, um, being given by the expression here in terms of the second order Legendre polynomial and the cosine of the inclination angle between the uh, the figure axis and the normal to the to the ecliptic. Uh, this last result um, predicts a, a torque that is orthogonal both to the figure axis and the normal to the ecliptic. So the, the precession is in the direction of the orbit normal vector. Now the, the Lagrangian of this problem is quite similar to that of the of the one studied in the case of the heavy symmetrical top when, when written in the in the body set of axes but we now have a more general potential than what was uh, what was employed there and if we now impose the conditions of uniform precession and we are not concerned regarding any kind of initial conditions we can take the derivatives of the angle theta to be vanishing and then the, the Lagrange equation with respect to theta um, you can see immediately that um, is given by, by this form. So this is entirely equivalent with the discussion from the heavy symmetrical top and the result 5.76 prime but this expression is more general. If we are now interested in the case of slow precession, so that is if the precession rate is a lot smaller than the, the spin frequency of the body, then we can um, 
approximate its, its square to be vanishing and then the depreciation rate itself is going to be for, from this result is going to be given by this uh, uh, by this product and then if we go back to equation 551 prime and so that is if we replace the potential of down of the of the heavy symmetrical top then this result becomes the the one here which just corresponds to the average result 574 which was found in the in the case of the heavy symmetrical top if we now look at uh, this precession rate for the potential derived previously in equation 5.90 then we obtain the the, the expression here. If, uh, if this movement is due to the Sun uh, then we can use uh, Kepler's third law to to write this uh, essentially we want to, to write this precession rate and ultimately in terms of the orbital period of the motion which can be uh, related to the to the let's say the, the sun earth distance through Kepler's third law leading to this result and then if we if we put in all the, the relevant numbers for the dynamic ellipticity the the inclination angle between the earth's figure axis and the normal to the ecliptic and everything else we end up with a precession rate a precession period of roughly 81,000 years so this is the period of the precession of reverse figure axis about the normal to the ecliptic which is induced by the gravitational torques of the Sun acting on the oblate mass distribution of the Earth. However the, the Sun is not the only celestial body acting on the on the Earth in such a manner from the from the bodies in the solar system. Um, the, the moon also has a contribution and while the moon is far lighter it is also much closer than the sun and it turns out that the precision rate it induces is almost twice as fast furthermore the lunar orbit is close to the ecliptic and in the same end uh, moves in the same sense as the solar orbit making the two precision rates add up and it turns out that the combined lunisolar precision rate is amounts to a, a complete rotation once uh, roughly every 26,000 years and this is slow enough that it justifies the the assumption that we can entirely neglect the the precession rate with respect to the the rate of Earth's rotation about its uh, about its figure axis Due to the Sun, Moon and Earth being in constant relative motion and the Moon's orbit being inclined by about 5 degrees to the ecliptic, the precession exhibits irregularities designated as astronomical notation. They are of about uh, 9 seconds of an arc in the angle theta and about 18 seconds of an arc in the angle phi. And even though they appear small, they are far larger than the true notation given by the Chandler wobble, which has never has an amplitude that is greater than a few tenths of an arc second. The results 588 and 593 have a further application in non-central forces acting on the body of mass capital M, namely the precession of the plane of the orbit of the mass point relative to an inertial frame. Uh, we can once again average over the orbit given the small precession rates and in effect this replaces the particle with a rigid ring of mass capital M having the same radius as the assumed circular orbit and spinning about the figure axis of the ring with the orbital frequency. Then uh, equation 590 provides the potential field in which the ring is located with the angle theta being the angle between the figure axes of the ring and the Earth. The average precession rate is given by equation 5.93, but uh, the quantities I3 and omega3 refer to the spinning ring. And then the, the relevant equations which follow immediately from 5.93 and 5.94 are the, are the ones given here. And they can represent the uh, 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 the precession of the moon due to the Earth's oblateness 
where this can be used to determine the precession of nearly circular orbits for artificial satellites revolving around the Earth. So essentially what we are what we are discussing here is a uh, a precession of the figure axis of the orbit of a satellite about the um, figure axis of the rotating Earth. And uh, this is uh, this is studied once again using Kepler's third law, but in this this time written for the period of the satellite, and it will have the and the the, the form will be will be given here where uh, the small m is in this case the, the mass of the Earth. Now, if if Earth were a, a uniform sphere, uh, the the two principal moments of inertia would be would be equal with the, the mom principal moment of inertia of a sphere and we would not observe the uh, precession of, um, of, a, of a satellite's orbit. However, in practice the, the principal moment of inertia uh, about the, about, uh, along the, the Earth's figure axis for rotation about the Earth's figure axis is, um, has a value approximately given by the, by the quantity here where so m is the mass of the Earth and r is the, the square of the, the planet's radius. So this is approximately uh, the the uh, the value here, which is largely due to the core being much more dense than the than the outer layers. And the, this value is determined precisely from observations of uh, of uh, precessional effects on the on the orbits of satellites. And then the so using 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 this this approximation, uh, the the precession uh, rate follows by the by the formula here. And now if we take the the radius of the of the satellite to be approximately equal with the radius of the Earth, it, it's not significantly it's it's not so far up in the atmosphere that there's a a a significant change in the radius. Um, so far in orbit, I should say, and the so if we take this approximation and the and the equatorial inclination of of uh, about thirty degrees, then this this result implies that the plane of the orbit precesses completely in about seven hundred orbits of the satellite. The orbital period is an average of about one point five hours, so a complete rotation of the orbital plane occurs in roughly six weeks and this is a a very significant result. Uh, now I mean more general comments regarding um, the the precession of the equinoxes can be can be found in the in the book of Physics of the Earth by Frank D. Stacy and Paul M. Davis. Um, this is a very advanced text that um, covers uh, covers many aspects of uh, of planetary physics starting from the from the origin of the solar system to and going through the the dynamics of the earth's core and, and so on and then they've selected some uh, uh, some qualitative discussions that are, are are relevant for our brief study here and one, one one interesting aspect is that the this the precession of the equinoxes might be a slightly dissipative phenomenon. Um, furthermore, the uh, solar torque is maximum at the solstices, so when when the sun is uh, at roughly this disinclination from the equatorial plane, and it vanishes at the equinoxes when the sun is directly above the equator. The the sense of the torque is the same at both solstices, so the the effect is cumulative. The lunar torque occurs in semi-monthly pulses, and its average effect is added to that of the sun, being slightly more than twice its value. So this is just uh, uh, go, going through once again through for some of the aspects that we've previously discussed, and uh, coupled with the precession are oscillatory motions of the axis towards and away from the pole of the ecliptic, which are the, the, the astronomical nutation that we've also mentioned. Uh, Semi-annual and semi-monthly nutations arise from the components of the solar and lunar torques perpendicular to the precessional component. 
they vanish at the solar and lunar solstices where we have a case of pure precession and at the equinoxes where the celestial bodies are directly above the, the equator. A large amplitude notation of about 9 arc seconds and having a period of 18.6 years arises from the coupling of the Earth to the precession of the pole of the lunar orbit above the pole of the ecliptic. The, the consequent variation in the inclination of the lunar orbit to the equator causes Earth's nutation with the same period. Since the precession progressively changes the orientation of the rotation axis relative to the perigee and apogee of the orbit, there is an associated climatic cycle. Furthermore, there are cyclic variations in the inclination of the ecliptic and the orbital eccentricity. All these orbital periodicities have clim climatic implications and are catalogued as the so-called uh, Milankovitch cycles. Uh, furthermore, as, a, as another interesting fact, the, the current polar star is Polaris and the, the previous one was Kochab and it held that alignment roughly between uh, oh, the year 1500 BC and up to around 500 AD, so roughly fairly close to the to the formal dissolution of the of the Roman Empire. Previously, the, the polar star was Tuban at around uh, 3000 BC, so around the the height of the ancient um, ancient Egyptian civilization. And the, the next polar star will be Ari uh, once again at around the uh, at around the year 3000, the current era. In summary, we have derived the, the precession of the equinoxes based on the quadruple deformation of the Earth and the torque, torques exerted upon it by the Sun and Moon. Similarly, we have discussed the precession of the plane of the orbit of a mass point relative to an inertial frame. And in the following, we will discuss the precession of systems of charges in uh, magnetic fields. So with that being said, I want to thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this discussion worth your time, and I will catch you later. Goodbye.